Welcome friends to Farm Fresh Designs 59. In today's video, I've got two rather large projects that are all about shabby chic and a little bit of glam. So let's get started. So my first project is a large box that I thrifted and I can't even remember what design it had on it um, because I've had it for so long, but I spray painted it black to begin with just to kind of get rid of all that design up underneath. And then I painted it with Rust-Oleum linen white chalk paint and I put several coats on it and then I sealed it. Now the transfer that I'm using on this project comes from Timeless Designs and you can find those on Amazon. And this particular transfer is called French Market Peonies. And I love this. And I also love these transfers I've used the Timeless Design transfers before, and they are such good quality. So I recommend them highly. And she has a lot of different designs. Now, the mold that I'll be using over most of the box comes by Redesign with Prima. And this one is called Cherry Blossoms. And if you've watched my channel before, you've seen me use this one a lot. Now, there's a lot of different pieces to it. And a lot of the pieces actually connect, but because they have like little stems that connect them, you know, if you're used to using air dry clay, you know that sometimes those little skinny pieces will break off. But in this instance, it's fine because I'm just going to kind of lay it out in different spots. And I put cornstarch in my mold and then I use DOS air dry clay. And you can find that at Hobby Lobby and on Amazon. Now I'm putting my mold on with Tight Bond Thick and Quick, which is the gray and the blue bottle. And it goes on really good and it also sets up pretty quickly. So if you're new to my channel, um, I do not like glue on my fingers and on my hands. So I use either a little silicone stick or a popsicle stick to put the glue on. And then I figure out where I want it placed and just touch it really gently on the edges to make sure those edges go down. And then on this one particular piece that I want to lay over on the side, I press it down really gently because I don't want there to be a crack in it at all. And because I want to secure it really well, then I just use a little bit of painter's tape on it but I don't leave it on for very long at all, just long enough for it to set up. But the one thing I do like to do with my molds is I like to go ahead and put some white paint on it before it begins to dry and that keeps it from cracking. And I just put it on really gently with a soft brush and I just go all around the edges and sometimes it kind of will settle in the cracks and so I'll kind of dab at that just a little bit so there's not a lot of extra paint on it. But on all the molds today on this box, I just need to only put one coat of white paint on the molds. Now this is the IOD bobble mold and I'm making just part of this with a hot, high temperature hot glue gun. And I'm just using that little part of it. Now this is a pretty long screw and I'm letting it stick into that hot glue for just a little bit and it leaves an indention in it. Because then what I'm going to do is I pour that or put that hot glue back in that mold again and set that bobble that's already been made on top of it and it makes it double sided. And if you notice there's a little bit of hole, a little hole in it. So I have drilled a hole in the top of the box and then I'm just going to screw it in. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. It was pretty difficult to screw in, but I was determined that I was going to use this as like a little top for this box to be able to open it really well. And I was really, really pleased with how it turned out. Um, I didn't want to use resin because um, I thought that the resin sets up too fast and I wasn't really sure how the screw was going to do in it. So this is pretty much trial and error, but I like the way it turned out. Now, once again, even though this is not air dry clay, I'm just going to go ahead and get it painted white. And once again, this one only takes 
one coat of paint. Now this is another part of that same transfer set, but right now all I really want are the flowers that are sitting in that little um, picture right now. And this transfer set has three pieces in it and each sheet is six by 12 inches. So you really get your money's worth with this transfer. But these particular flowers that were in that water bucket are a little bit smaller than the other ones in the transfer set. So I just need those flowers. So I sort of fussy cut it. And then I cut a little strip down the middle and kind of cut a little um, indention in it because I'm putting that transfer around that little topper. And then um, I apologize, I forgot to show you that transfer that it says Paris right there on the side. And that is also part of that transfer set. So now I'm gonna be starting on the sides of the box. So once again, I put my transfer on, and if you've not used transfers before, it is super important that you seal it before you put it on. Especially if the paint is not dry all the way, um, you can put that transfer on without sealing it and it will pull up the paint. And sometimes you've really messed up your transfer and you, you can't fix it. So um, it's just better to take that time to seal it. And I like to use Rust-Oleum Clear Matte Sealer. So I pulled out my Cherry Blossoms mold again and I just make different pieces to it. Um, sometimes I just go ahead and make all the different little pieces and then I decide a little bit later what all I want. But I know that I don't want to use any other mold for flowers on this because I want it to stay pretty consistent. And then once again, I put them on with tight bond glue. And this little box, it does take me several days to make it because um, I'm decorating all the different sides of the box except for the back. And so I want to make sure that it's set up really well um, before I change over and do another side of the box. But each time I put the molds on, I always like to go and paint them white just so that it doesn't crack at all. And I'm just pressing it really gently on those edges just to make sure it has adhered. And then as I was painting each one, um, a lot of times I would see little specks on the box that I would find that I needed to just brush over gently. Now, what I did just a while ago was sometimes when you put cornstarch in your molds, it'll pop up on the little mold. And I like to take just a little bit of brush and brush it off. Um, because if I don't brush off that extra cornstarch, then when I start to paint it, it's kind of messy. Now, this is the other side and another part of that transfer. And this time I'm putting the transfer up at the top of the box. And then what I'm going to do is once I get it all transferred on, then I'm just going to take a box cutter and I'm just going to gently slice down where the top and the bottom meet just so that I can separate it really gently. And then with the transfer set, um, I like to just pull up that plastic and then kind of work my way down. And then also remember when you use your transfers, use that plastic to rub over and that's called burnishing it. And I did that with each transfer. And I just do this very gently because I don't want to tear up the transfer. And I just open it up and rub my finger across just to kind of push down those little edges. And it did make a little mark in it a couple places, but I was fine with that. Now I want to add just a little bit more to the top of the box and there's a little piece of the transfer that has a bumblebee on it. Now I also, once again, I want to put that cherry blossoms mold on the other side of the box. But because that transfer is up at the top, I tend to put a little bit more mold on that side and I just do it all down at the bottom and I don't try to work my way up to the top of it. So now I'm gonna be finishing the top of the box and there's just a little bit of wording 
Um, and I put that up at the top where I did the transfer that said Paris, just because I wanted something a little bit extra. So it, it, it didn't look like it just kind of stopped. And then I use that little bumblebee transfer and it faces the front of the box. But I love these transfers and they do such a good job and they go on really well, but I highly recommend them. Okay, so now I have finished off all of the box and one of the things that I forgot to film is I use the IOD lock and key and I just wanted to put something on the front of the box just to make it look like it it did have a lock on it and then up at the top of the box you'll see in just a minute um, that I didn't film putting more of that cherry blossom mold on it but I did put some of that up at the top now it's all dry and I'm just using gold gilding wax to just bring out all the detail in those molds and I love it. And this is going in my craft room and I'm super excited about it. It is so pretty and it's great storage and I haven't decided what I'm going to put inside of it, but I love it. So tell me something. What do you think? Do you like this transfer set? And this mold that's so pretty. It, I didn't have a penny mold, but I felt like this cherry blossom fit in real well with it. But um, I'm not going to say this is my favorite project today because I love both of them, but I really do like this and I've been excited to be able to film this for you. But I am a pink girl through and through, so this is one of my favorite pieces. Now, if you're liking the video today, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're not already part of our family. Now, my next piece is just a paper mache um, dress form, mannequin. I'm not sure what you want to call it. And I bought this at Hobby Lobby. And I'm just painting it with Rust-Oleum linen white chalk paint. And I put about two or three coats on it because I wanted to make sure that it covered up that paper mache really well. But I like old dress forms and old patterns because I started sewing when I was eight years old. So I've always liked pieces like this. And once again, this is gonna go in my craft room along with this box because, well, it's gonna have a lot of pink on it too. So I'm gonna be decoupaging this napkin on it. And I've used this before in videos and I love this napkin, it's got really tiny little pink flowers and if you've not decoupaged a napkin you need to make sure that you get through all the different plies to where you get down to the last piece where it's the final design and I just take a little bit of painter's tape and just gently pull at the back of it and this particular napkin has three plies to it and then I'm just using my water pen to make those edges kind of a little jagged instead of it being so straight. But in the long run, I really didn't need to do this. This was a little bit more difficult than what I was anticipating. So I'm using Pent Art Decoupage Varnish and Glue because I want to make this napkin be the little skirt on this dress form or mannequin. Now, this is, <laughs> this is where it got pretty difficult. Because it was a rounded surface, um, I ended up getting quite a few wrinkles on this napkin. It was not as, not as easy as I thought it would be. And in hindsight, I probably would have maybe torn it into smaller pieces and decoupaged that on. So do as I say, not as I do. But um, it was a struggle bus to get this on. But in the end, I really like it. Um, but I was getting pretty aggravated because it wouldn't um, conform to what I wanted it to do. So in the end, I tried to kind of cut off that extra because I was hoping that would help just a little bit. But I finally worked my way all around it, but it, it took a lot of effort and I had to piece it. But as I was doing that napkin, I would just put a little bit of um, decoupage varnish and glue instead of pulling, instead of brushing it on all the way down to the bottom, because I think it would have really been a big old hot mess if I had tried to 
um, have glue over all of it. And then that napkin would have stuck to it here and there. And it would, it would have been an even bigger mess than what I had. But um, I like the way that it turned out. And I'll try to link this napkin in the description box below. I can't remember if I got it off of Etsy or Amazon. So then I just kind of made like a little snip in it. Um, just so that it can try to go over that corner better. But in the long run, <laughs> it, it didn't help a whole bunch. So if you decide to do this, I would suggest just taking smaller strips and decoupaging it on. And then I do go back and I paint the bottom of it as well. Okay, so now I'm going to glam up my little dress former mannequin. So this is the IOD frames mold. And it's the smallest frame on this particular mold. Now, what I need is I only need the edges of that frame. Um, I tried making a mold with just the outside edges, but it was too difficult. So I just went on and made the whole thing. And then I'm just using my Cricut tool to cut that air dry clay. Because um, can you guess what I'm gonna be using it for? Yes, I'm gonna be using it for a belt buckle. So I need that inside to be um, out of it. And then I just kind of press down on those corners to clean it up and I put it on with tight bond thick and quick. Now the belt is gonna be from the IOD trimmings mold and it's one of the skinnier molds. And it's these little shapes that have a floral design in the middle and I think it mimics that napkin really well but this is going to be kind of hard so I can only do one side of the belt at a time and I need to lay it over on its side so I kind of like butt it up against that buckle and then at the back I want the two pieces of the belt that start on either side of the buckle, I want them to meet in the middle. And then I just use that little credit card that I smooth out my molds with just to um, trim off that little extra part right at the back because then I will make another piece of the trimmings mold and wrap it around and it will meet on the other side. Now this is the IOD Dainty Flourishes mold and it's the really skinny swirly part. And I'll let it set up over to the side because it's really um, thin. And so what I like to do is let it set up. And then that way, when I take it out, it comes out a little bit easier. Now, this is the IOD Cameo mold. And within that little mold, there is a little Cameo that's more in the shape of a rose. And so I, it's in the center of the mold. And so I cut that out and then I put that in the middle of the buckle. Now the Dainty Flourishes mold, I've kind of let it sit out for a little bit so it can start to set up better and it then that way it doesn't pull out or break when I pull it out. Because now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make her like a little necklace. So I take one side and then I put it, I'm gonna take the other piece and it's gonna meet in the middle down in a V shape. And then what I like to do is I go ahead and um, I've already painted all of these white and I'm gonna glam it up with the gold gilding wax. Now, one of the things that I forgot to film is that um, at the V point of this little, I made like a little necklace and that is another part of that IOD cameo mold and you'll be able to see that in the final reveal. But I've painted all of the molds white and made sure they were good and dry, and then I am um, just put the gold gilding wax on it. Now, I really debated on the top of this little dress form. I thought about painting it pink, but I couldn't find a pink that matched it exactly, and so I just opted to keep it white. And then that way, the little necklace and the would can have the gold gilding wax on it. So what do you think? I just think it is so precious and I love it. And you can see on that napkin where it wrinkled just a little bit, but um, 
in the long run, it turned out fine. But I love this, and I just think it's so sweet. And my granddaughter hasn't seen it yet, so I'm sure she's going to like it a lot, too, because she likes jewelry. And there's that little cameo mold. But I love the way this turned out. So this is going in my craft room as well. So friends, we are at the end of the video. Now, I've used lots of molds today. And if you want to recreate projects like this, use whatever you have. It's just that um, with this particular transfer, this was the only mold that I had that mimicked those flowers. But I love the way that both pieces came out. Um, and in my last video, I mentioned that I had closed my vendor booth. Um, sales were really down, and I just felt like I didn't need to keep it right now for you know, any length of time. Um, I want to make sure that, you know, the economy has picked back up before I have a vendor booth. So what I'm making these days, it's just going to be for me or I'm going to give it away. So in the comments below, tell me which was your favorite piece today. And I don't, I can't say that one or the other is my favorite because I really like both of them so, so much. So once again, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and make sure to turn on the notifications button so YouTube will notify you when I upload my next video.